Hello and welcome to the latest reflection for Lent based on Worship in the Wilderness by Sarah and Sam Hargreaves. Today I'm going to begin with some words from the book of Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. A voice says, Cry out! And I said, What shall I cry? All people are a grass, their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Have you ever come across someone who prides themselves in telling it like it is? They'll say, oh, I'm no hypocrite. If I've got a problem with you, I'll tell you to your face. You'll know about it. I can't say I ever find them necessarily good people to be around. They often have a very selective sense of how it is for a start. And this week, as we continue to reflect on this theme of worship in the wilderness, we're thinking about a truth speaking journey and maybe that does conjure up images of quite angry people shouting at us about where we're getting it all wrong there could be very little care about how people are left feeling if you're hurt well i'm sorry that's just how it is truth hurts you gotta be cruel to be kind really is that what we're thinking of when we speak of lifting up our voice and speaking truth? Actually, we might be tempted to think so when we consider how this passage was used in the New Testament. All of our Gospels see this passage as pointing towards John the Baptist, who prepares the way for Jesus. He's the one whose voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. John seems to have been something of a firebrand. Not bothered who got upset, to the point where he wound up in prison for daring to challenge the king's morals. He spoke the truth. Of course we are not John the Baptist. But if we're followers of Jesus, we are called to a similar task of pointing others to Jesus. But you know what? Perhaps we feel more like the respondent in verse 6, who responds to the call to cry out by saying, What shall I cry? Isaiah offers some helpful direction. All people are grass. They're constantly like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. Human beings and their glory days are momentary, fleeting. We're here one day, we're gone the next. Leaders come and go. People get rich and then lose it all or die. Fame and fortune are so transitory. It's what God says that really matters. It's what God says that lasts forever. And there is a sense in which that's not a message any of us wants to hear. Particularly when we're young, we like to think of ourselves as fairly invincible. The moment when that kind of innocence is lost, when we realise just how frail and vulnerable we really are. It comes as quite a shock to us. But there is another dimension to this passage. It's not really so much just about telling it like it is, 
at least as we tend to use the term. Notice how Isaiah begins. Comfort, comfort my people, it begins. Speak tenderly to them. That's the context in which those words about frailty and vulnerability are spoken. But more important is what they are contrasted with. The word of our God, which stands forever. It's contrasted with the faithfulness of God. Lent is a season when we're encouraged to search our hearts. It begins with a reminder that we come from dust and to dust we will return. Today's passage takes us back to that frailty and vulnerability. We are like grass and flowers. We wither. We fade. And we are encouraged also to think about the frailty and transitory nature of our commitment. Because that too blossoms and fades. We wrestle with temptation, sometimes successfully, sometimes not. We feel a sense of shame that we are not what we would be, what we'd like to be, what we could be, what we should be. But that's only part of the truth. Because it never depended on you in the first place. It's the word of our God which stands forever. What God has to say about us. God's words are words to lean on, to be encouraged by, from which to draw inspiration. We can't escape discovering our frailty and vulnerability. Sooner or later, we have to face up to it. Living in denial is unhealthy. But we can face it in the light of a more important truth. That we are loved more than we can ever know. That's a message our world really needs to know. A message people are longing to hear. A message that will bring comfort when spoken tenderly. A message that may encourage people. And may we be encouraged to share that message. Because that's something we should lift up our voices and shout about. Lift it up, don't be afraid. Yes, even at our best, our glory is fleeting. But it's what is done with God. And what God has to say about us that lasts forever. Let's pray. Word of God, may my speech be full of your truth, grace and righteousness. Guide my words and give me boldness to speak what is on your heart. Amen.